Hey guys, this is Craig, the producer, and I also help to keep the lights on over at BigMyo.com. Thank you for supporting the channel, and as well as recording Mio's awesome opening lectures, we've also been categorizing his blitz sessions into specific games. So, for the first time, you'll be able to see a professional chess coach playing your opening, even the dubious ones, over and over again in the real world. And we will start with everyone's favorite, the Latvian Gambit. Cheers. This is German guy. Played e4, and I played another game, e5. And let's go, Latvian Gambit again. And once again, this is another guy who plays this d4 line against Latvian. You guys, uh, you guys seem not to watch the Butcher's channel and to learn what's the best against the Latvian Gambit. Sorry, but you have to do it. Bishop d6 and playing castles. If he wants to take on d5, let it be, man. I don't care. Actually, do I have to take if they take on d5? I guess I should. Bishop e5, knight g4, knight d5, bishop d5, queen f6, knight c6, knight f7. Let me just go with my favorite move in Latvian, queen e8. Looks like I'm threatening to take on e5, but I won't satisfy myself with that move. Definitely not, not with this one, so let's go with something else there. By the way, sorry for... Okay, we just had some advertisements there. Okay, so what is he trying to do? Should I take by pawn? Let's go. I, I like to take by pawn in this Latvian Gambit positions. Just like I told you, it's very difficult for me to play Latvian Gambit. Naturally, it's not my type. Actually, naturally, it is my type of the opening, but I believe it's very incorrect opening, if you ask me. Uh, let's go with this queen g6. I want to play here um, f5 and launch the attack. I can also play h5 and launch the attack here. And if he plays knight a3, I'll go with... Yeah. Let me just take on h3. Okay. Let me just bring it back to d7 unless I missed some mate. Bishop g2, knight g2, rook g8. And then when he plays rook g1, there is no mate. Let me just bring it back to d7. I want to keep the tension. Rook g8. Let's go here. Okay, I was expecting that move. Okay, let me just go here and stick my bishop right into the heart of his game. And mate is coming. Check. And mate is coming. Let me just sack here. Man, I like this Latvian Gambit. It works against these guys, even though I haven't started this since I made the video uh, for, for our channel. So, this looks way better than I expected it should. If he takes queen g3 is mate. If he plays queen h6, I take and bishop f4 is mate. White I love it. I simply love this one. Let's go with e5 and your favorite Latvian gambit. Playing an FM. Winston Spitzel from Germany. Guys, who seems to be pretty confused. For some reason, everyone goes with it. Everyone. Every single player goes goes with and, and, and plays this line. 
And I think that black is fine here. Bishop c4, d5. If knight c3, I'm just kicking the knight away with tempo. Playing d5. Solidifying construct. Structure. And go with bishop d6. You know, it just shows me that you guys were absolutely right when you said that this guy seemed to be unprepared against this rare opening. So black looks awesome, simply awesome in this position. If he goes long castle, don't you even dare to think about it. Let me just kill you there on the queen side. Okay, a4 with the idea of b4, if h6, g6, no big deal, baby. I try not to and a3, I'll break with b4 without any hesitation, don't worry about that. A3, A3, B4, A takes 94. 94, Bishop B4. Rook F2. Let's go with that. He probably came up with that trick. Oh no. Let me just bring the Bishop because I like the Dark Square Bishop. It's a monster here. And you play Bishop A6, Queen one we just go with knight a6 because his uh, bishop anyways is a bad piece. Queen b6 looks good. Look at this, if I play knight before knight a2 will be me. Let me just go with it. Let me just go with it. Okay. Now I want the bishop here. Even weak at the dark squares in his position. Now it's time to break in with bishop e4. Bishop e4 was worth of considering there. Let me remove the defender. And threatening f2. Oh, I like Latvian Gambit. Why didn't I play this opening earlier? Looks like top opening for Blitz. Okay, no big deal. Queen a5. Or queen c7 to control the dark square. Let's go with it. Because after this king, he has to take. I'm getting ready for rook f2. Get ready, babe. Get ready for it. What do I feel a resign button should come here? A3, let's go. I'm not gonna take the work. I'm not interested. Uh, let me go with. Oh, I didn't even make a move and he resigned. Why do I like this opening so much? E4, E5. We're just looking for Latvian Gambit. Come, baby. Knight F6. This guy played D4 straight away like Maya. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna kick your ass in this position no big deal man let it be i play castle c6 and everything is just fine here so let's just go i take on f3 i do 97 to remove the knight play queen c7 saying like baby move it play Ninety-four. So I'm I'm threatening to take this bishop and to weaken the knight on d7. I like this move. I like it. He can't move the bishop to g3. I like Latvian. You know that lately I'm doing I'm scoring well. The only problem against the Latvian is the one that I gave you how to treat it with white pieces. Bishop h7, huh? Nothing. I take queen h5, king g8. He doesn't have perpetual. Rook on f4 defends just everything. Let's go, baby. Knight e7, just bishop e7. Now I am more solid than ever. If bishop f3, rook a to f8. If queen h5, just. He wants queen h5, g6, bishop g6. Worst case scenario for me, perpetual check. But we don't even wanna give him that one. For Latvian Gambit, we always gotta go for mate. So 
So let's go. Are you ready? Bishop a3. Are you ready? Bishop c5. Are you serious? Big Maya, you're the biggest one of all. Look at this. I'm just coming up with this queen here. I have check. I'm gonna include this rook on f8. Oh, I like this game a lot. Queen f3 maybe is going to spoil my plans here. I have to take there. I have to. I have to. Sorry, baby. Sorry. I have to take it. I'm threatening queen h2. Ooh, I love the Latvian gambit. I also like this music. Nice check. Rook comes to f8, baby, and it's made in 20 moves. Okay, next one. Silly policy. We're black. Let's go e4, e5. Knight f3 and Latvian gambit one more time. This guy knows some theory. He plays the best move. Kick the knight away. Take on e4. Defend it. And who knows for... by knight so I can play bishop b7 and rook f8 queen f5 should be enough for white he's got a bishop here he's up a piece he should be winning uh, I blundered knight h4 to be honest probably I had to play some bishop g4 knight a6 and to go into that position
I have to go here. Let me just go with this move. Uh -huh, he threatens check to win the win. I don't have a good place to move this piece. So I don't even see how am I going to defend myself here. Managed to trick me, I'm completely lost, and now this is gonna be a typical game that is gonna be played on time. Now I have to play fast and stupid. Well, the guy played almost an ideal game, but he was extremely uh, slow in the end. I'm worth 76 from my rent. Let's go. Oh, Latvian Gambit, my favorite. I love it. This is the first guy who played knight takes e5 against me. d4, d6, knight c4, take on e4. First guy who knows some theory here, unbelievable. Knight c3, queen g6. And now the best move is f3. If you watch the lecture how to beat the Latvian game, but this is the way to play against the Latvian. So if he plays f, f3, I'll take and play knight f6. That's absolutely the best line against the Latvian Gambit. Even Rublevsky's. Roblovsky played against Kasparov like that. Okay, here I'm just defending. I want to play d5 next and I'll defend everything. But I also have knight c6 here, right? Wait a sec, d5, knight e5, and somewhere. But if I play knight c6, I'm threatening his knight on d4. He can play knight b5. In which case I can easily play king d8, defending myself. And then kicking the knight away with a6 while the pawn on e4 is defended. I like it. It's fine.
Love you, baby. Movie 5 and playing your one of your favorite openings, and that's the Latvian Gambit. Let's go with this one. You know, if they take on f5, you just play e4. On this one, you just take. And when they take by knight, you play knight f6 to prevent queen h5. When they play bishop e2 to give me check, you just kick the knight away with this move. Knight c4, no big deal, bishop e7. But I can also play d5, followed by bishop d6. If... I actually like d5, followed by bishop d6. I kind of like to play uh, more aggressive whenever castle c takes c takes knight takes knight takes knight takes and then to open up everything to attack let's go let's go i'll i'll just sack a pawn for your satisfaction this guy doesn't want to take it okay no big deal let me just put my king on h8 to put it into safety. Uh, they can take it, worst case scenario, I have bishop h2 in the end of everything. But take a look at my bishop on d6. I guess that's why we all like Latvian Gambit with the black pieces. I also want to play some bishop c7, followed by queen d6 if possible. If I take, I'm going to give him an easier time in the center. So let me just go with the bishop c7. So if he takes, I'll take by pawn. White looks good here. I can play bishop b6, for example, to provoke c5 and then bring my bishop back to c7. And for the rest of the game, there will have like a bad backward pawn. Here I can take. Here I can play bishop f5. Looks pretty solid as well. Knight a6, knight b4, knight e3. Looks like a logical move. Rook e8 also looks good. But I need my work on the open file. On the other hand, I don't see any threat by my opponent at the moment. C5 crossed my mind, but that, that, that's not what I like. Let me just go with knight a6. Uh, developing move. I want to play knight before knight d3, maybe to sack a pawn. I was expecting this move to be honest. Let me just go here. Idea is a3. I'll play bishop f5. And when they play the rook f5, knight d3, and they cannot take here because of queen d4 check. So that's my idea. This is more like. Oriental house music. 94. Okay. Looks like I blundered that completely. And that's what I hate about me sometimes. I, I'm thinking about some way easier moves and blunder like very obvious ones. Bishop h2, king h2, queen has nowhere to go. Bishop f5, rook f5, bishop h2, king h2, knight e4. Well, we shouldn't give up. We gotta fight. Knight e4, bishop d8. Bishop f5, rook f5, knight e4, bishop d8. I'm not too happy, I made a terrible blunder here. Bishop h2, king h2, queen c7, bishop f4.
Okay, let's go with this move. If he takes, I'm gonna take. In case of knight g7, I'll take on e4 by Quinn with mutual complications. Okay, I was expecting this one. Looks like the crucial moment of the game was when I decided to play that knight a6 knight before, which was obviously a blunder, but certainly not the best idea. Let's go now. Bishop f5, rook f5, queen e4, rook f3 could be a possible idea, and then queen g6 to win the piece. So I'm threatening bishop f5, rook f5, queen e4, uh, rook f3 to defend mate, queen g6. Threatening bishop on h6 and mate on g2. That would be a nice salvation there. the best move here for my opponent should be to move this knight but if he moves the knight I have some queen g6 actually I don't see like too many easy possibilities for him so this queen e8 was at least a nice move to create decent counter chances because I'm down a pawn but that's what I'm telling you this is what Latvian Gambit gives you okay Let's go with queen f5. I guess he's gonna play bishop g7 now. Knight g3, I'll take on g3. Even though I like position of my opponent much more. I have a decent counter chances in this complicated position. Obviously. It's nice. Uh, fun fact was that two, two and a half minutes ago, he had like four minutes and I only had one minute and 40 seconds. Now I'm on one minute and 30 seconds. Let me threaten mate. He has to play, yeah. Let me go here, threatening that bishop. Let me exchange that bishop. If he plays bishop before I have rook f3. And by the way, if he takes the knight, okay, rook f3, obviously, that's a good move. I'm coming up with some nice tactics which is one of the nice ideas of this gambit. I'll take it here. And I'll jump with my knight on d3. Now position is absolutely unclear and this is all what we like about the Latvian gambit. Complications, tactics, and always like nice counter chances. Just like you see even in games on five minutes, you can play a decent games with lots of counter chances and on the top of all that, I'm not even worse regarding material. This Larsen guy, I guess, he's probably swearing himself for not being able to win this game earlier. Now, queen f5, I'm happy to exchange if he's willing to. Okay, let me just... Now you just have to, on three seconds, I mean, I can give him queen h3 and to give him a torture, but that's not gonna happen. I'll uh, place it here, so I can, on check, I can go here. Okay, he doesn't even wanna... Server announcement. We just go there, 95, looks like a good idea. Let me just go with h5. King h7. White forfeits on And he lost on time. Another Latvian Gambit candidate master Ilder from Argentina. The guy who doesn't like to accept Gambits, obviously. I keep provoking him to take on f5. Let 
me just go with the bishop before. I'll go here. So just like you see, I have a pretty fine position here. Queen d6. Let me just defend myself with b6. I feel like d4, but I don't see anything wrong with this move either. Because if he takes, I'll take, he has to take by bishop. That simply has to be treated. Okay. And if I go here, 94, let me just put this. Actually, let me see what is he trying to do with this bishop. Okay. Rook takes f6. Looks good enough. Let's go with it. Let me just kick it away. Move it here. I want to bring my knight to d4. Pile up these rooks on the open files. Rook d8 comes next, followed by rook f to d6. You know that in end games it's always so important. You know, now this knight is kind of limited. Let me just threaten that bishop. He has to move it. And then I have g5 and knight f3. Interesting is c3, then I play e3. And I believe he resigns immediately. But not. Yeah, nice. On this one, I'll play. What's wrong with this move? Do you see anything for him? If he plays c3, can I play now e3? Can I do it? e3, he takes, I take there. Let me just go with that move. He's completely lost. He's going to fix the pawns, but I'm gonna win an exchange. Maybe I even have an interesting idea with knight e6. He moves the knight, knight g5. Threatening some nasty mating threats there. Yeah, maybe I can come up with knight e6. Not, not to take this exchange. I mean, I'm winning there. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's be highly materialistic here. Threatening this pawn, but at the same time threatening check to win the piece. I don't see how is he going to stop this. Well, everything was based on this move. Let me just go there, check. And attack this one. I need to get some material here in order to be able to finish him off. For example, he's got 95 to defend on c4. I was supposed to move the rook immediately on f1 and to force the rook exchange. Not the brilliant realization by myself here. And now I'll do it because he has to. Okay, he can't play rook f7 because I'll take it there. Nice. If I undermine this knight, what is he going to do? Knight g6 brings him nothing. Yeah. It's not gonna bring him anything. Nothing. I just want to take that pawn. Actually, I could have taken an a3. Not the best realization here, but I mean, I really. Okay. I can also play fast baby. I 
can give it, give it up. I can give it up. Who cares about that rook? Who cares about that rook? Okay. Now the real torturing is coming. He doesn't want to resign. I don't want to show. Let's go here. I have queen h7 mate, but I won't mate him. Let's just force him to come to g7. Let's just push these pawns. Let's just push these pawns. Let's just push this pawn. And this is a nice mate with the four queens on the board.